Hello! I am Mo Tuzno, the tabletop bellhop, and I would like to welcome you to the first room upgrade. What we're going to do now is we are going to take one of our regular guests, a, the board game Gentis, and we are going to give it a free upgrade by giving it a box insert. So we are improving the room for Gentis. Now this box insert did come with the Kickstarter version of Gentis, uh, which is a game from Tasty Mintrol Games about uh, an ancient civilization civ building game. I want to get it played this Saturday, and what's going to help with that is having that box insert. So this box insert is made by a company called Folded Space. Every previous box insert I've made has been out of wood. I can't remember the type of wood right now. This is not made out of wood. This is made out of a thick foam core, which you can actually see pretty well here. It's a nice thickness. It's all pre-cut. We're going to have to punch this out. All right, our package contains four pairs of sheets, eight total. You make two copies, two or four copies of each tray. Please make sure you dry assemble each tray correctly before gluing it together. Ordinary PVA glue is required when assembling your trays for extra strength. After assembling your trays are, uh, after assembly, the trays are put in three layers in your game box. You can find general assembly tips at www.foldedspace.net. So right now I need tray 1A and 1B. The trays are identical. So I have 1A and 1B. So step one, logo on the base folded down. So let's see how easy these come out. Oh, that's not bad. I don't think I am going to need the hobby knife. All right, so these pieces, and then I need these little tiny ones right here. So far, instructions are really clear. Kind of highlights which pieces to grab on the uh, boards. That's a nice touch. So it says name face down. That's gonna go right there. 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 Okay, right away, definitely not as tight feeling as the wood. Like this just feels loose. It works, but... All right, we're not having the lights not flickering colors. I think that's better. So yeah, dry fits fine. So now we're gonna add some glue to this. It just feels so flimsy compared to the wooden inserts. It feels like it's just gonna bend in my fingers. What I think I need is another tool. I think I should grab toothpicks just to get some of the glue out of the corners. I'm not used to having to glue these when I'm assembling them. Okay, definitely not as tight as a wood insert, but I'll say one thing, when this is done, it's gonna be much lighter than any wood insert I own. Elastics too, if you have them. So there you go, simple enough. Now we have a nice branded box that says folded space. So yes, waiting for glue to dry. So what I'm doing, I didn't see this anywhere, but I am gonna slap some elastics on this to hold it nice and tight while it dries. If I don't fail completely at using elastics. Okay, when using elastics, make sure they don't slip into the joints. Lesson learned. Oh okay. yeah, box one, simple enough. Box two should be the same thing, different logo on the bottom. So yeah, definite, they punch out really nice, really nice, like, that's easy, that's nice and simple. Big bonus there, again, dry assemble first, make sure everything fits together well, though I don't know what I'd do if it didn't. So this is gonna be the second box with the TMG, Tasty Minstrel Games on the bottom. So yeah, it reminds me of doing one of those 3D jigsaw puzzles, but easier. Very similar style of pieces. Like the, the consistency of this foam is very much like one of those Puzz 3D. Okay, second box. Second verse, same as the first. No, 
but I think a single elastic, just holding this in place may be better. So that, we're gonna double this one. Strategic elastic placing. All right, box two, all elastic it up. All right, that was easy. These trays are identical. Now I need tray 2A. It's on sheet 1A. Sheet 1A. And logo on the base faces down. They keep telling me to turn these over when I'm done for whatever reason. So I don't know. Turn them over. So we have this, this, this. And these two. Again, everything came apart really nice. Logo side down. Definitely no complications here. A lot less zigzags, I guess you'd call them, compared to uh, all of the wooden inserts I built. There you go, that's what we're building. Nice Gentis logo on there. So far, now a thing tells you what goes in these. Maybe we'll figure that out later. So dry fit, fit good. Recommendation is do a dry fit on every piece. One nice thing about the wooden inserts is so far I have had to use very little glue. Um, I use masking tape on all the squares, but I haven't used much glue at all, uh, which has been really nice. They all have fit snug enough that you don't need it. These definitely do. There is nothing that would hold this together if I wasn't actually gluing it. I am the tabletop bellhop, your cardboard concierge here to answer your game and game night questions. Yeah, this actually, this is much more solid than the smaller boxes somehow. Like however they assembled this, the amount of space in between, this is this is nice and chunky. I like it. Again, be glad I have a bunch of elastics around. I'm gonna throw a couple of these on just to keep things square. Step three, done. Step four, tray 2B. Oh, see this time the symbols on the base face up. This makes more sense. So I don't know what this one does, but it's just a generic box. This next one's gonna show what goes in it, uh, which happens to be the first player token. I know for sure. Sorry, I'm holding this in a bad place. So I'm gonna, it shows symbols for what's gonna go in the box. Big bonus points. Second box, exactly the same. So this whole box, this said right on the first page. You're basically doing everything twice for this game. You're building a lot of the same boxes over and over again. No need for a mallet and hammer. That's a nice touch because the wooden one sometimes took a bit of work. I also often had to use an X-Acto knife to cut them out of the sprue, whereas these are popping right out. I like these big boxes. So there you can see, box with shows what symbols you need inside. I said, it looks like the coins and the um, coins and the first player token. I'm thinking that's the coins. Again, I read the rules. I, I will, um, I don't want to complain about Gentis yet because I haven't played it yet, but the rules were a little opaque. Um, uh, they told you exactly how to do everything and every step made perfect sense, but I honestly had no idea what you do in the game or why you would do these things. So it listed all the different actions you can take and what happens when you took them, but I didn't really see why you would take any of those actions. It definitely seems like a game you have to play once or twice just to, to get the gist of. Now maybe I'll play two rounds and I'll get it. That's what I'm hoping to find out Saturday, which is why I'm building this box insert. So yo, that box, done. So now I am doing tray 3A and 3B. Trays are identical. The symbols are gonna be base face up. These look a little funkier. So again, I need sheet 1A, sheet 1B. So they're keeping everything nice and in order. And this is gonna be the end of it. So again, I really appreciate this aspect where it shows you exactly what part of the punch board to punch out. That's a really nice touch. Big props for that. Folded space, get some bonus points for that one. They're also surprisingly good at um, cutting things logically. All right, sheet 1B is done. All right, same thing. We're going to do a dry fit. Make sure I understand how everything fits. And there's a good reason for that, because I now see 
Oh, bad place to have the glue, sorry. So I now see that this is probably, I don't want to put that on first, because then I can't fit these in. So I actually want to do that the other way around. So these little bits are going to have to go in first, it looks like. So there you go. Yep, that's why we do a dry fit first. And this is going to hold some citizen tokens. Oh, now I'm screwed up for my to hold it off. There we go. Perfect. So far, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm liking this. Folded space for the win. Here's the one slight trick so far is figuring out exactly where you want the glue. So far, I have not put glue on an outside edge, but I'm sure at some point I'm going to put like glue here where I don't need it because it's an outside edge. Yeah, when we're doing the... the I don't, did we ever release the actual videos we did of the um, Gloomhaven insert? Because man, that was a mess. We tried using Deanna's camera, that was a problem. It was overheating. Uh, we had issues with sounds whenever I used the hammer. Uh, we also had a problem with the table vibrating because I had a, we had a tripod set up on it. And, um, we had a problem with the microphone. I don't think we ever released those. Okay, really impressed by how this piece went together. Like so far, like the most complicated piece we've had. And it went together really nice. I'm just smoothing out some of the glue on the inside edges here. It's, it's a little hard to uh, squeeze out just the right amount. That's a nice box, that, that is nice. On to sheet 1A. So I'm going to build the exact same thing again. So exact same thing for different pieces because there are six different types of citizens you can hire in the game. And these are counters that represent those types of citizens. All right, I am going to do the dry fit quick, though I know how this goes together now. Got to put these little ones in first. This is, this is much less stressful than the wooden. The wooden ones were just hard enough to get the fit that they could uh, be frustrating at times. So far, nothing about this is frustrating. They're way cheaper than wooden inserts. They're way lighter than wooden inserts. are on to tray 3 A and B. Trays are identical. Oh, we just did that. 3 A and B. We are on tray 4. A and B. Trays are identical. Text on the base face up. We're on sheet 2A and sheet 2B. Yeah, it's got that Egyptian kind of, I don't know, cave painting look too. To me, that, that reminds me of cave painting kind of look. It's a really neat system because I, I don't know the two different sides, but like say this is like philosophy and warfare. You have a track that's one to six and your guys can level up across it, but on one side's the, the peace side and the other's the war side and they can't pass each other. So a perfect, like not a perfect civilization, but like you could have three philosophy and three war, but if you go to four philosophy, then the max your war could be as two. And if you go to five philosophy, the max your war could be as one. I thought that sounded really neat. And it's like that for all six. Like each of these is in a pair against the opposite. That part seemed really cool. And the actual mechanic of the game is all about time, which that sounded pretty cool too. Oh, nice touch. I like this. This says new cities expansion pieces. I like it. Separate box for the expansion. Comes out pretty well. Like, look at that. It's kind of just falling off. I'm not pushing hard. So this is also face up. I might actually need the instructions. This is not just all walls here. That is what the finished piece is going to look like. Okay, take it all apart and glue it together. It's a game I think Deanna's really going to like once we play it. I'm pleased to report she dug Teo to walk in. I thought she would see very much her kind of game. Misery Temple. I think that's what we're going to rename 
tale to walk into. What do you think? I think you dig any game that's unforgiving. Games where you spend half, half the, no, it wasn't Zolkin. That, that's my biggest thing. Zolkin is the tighter version. Zolkin is unforgiving. It is rough. You seem to like games where you're kicking yourself for making mistakes. Zolkin is Misery Temple. There you go. Done. There is the box for the new cities expansion pieces. So for those of you just joining, I am building the box insert for the deluxified edition of Gentis. Uh, tools I'm using is white glue and right now a toothpick. I also have a hobby knife, but I haven't had to touch it yet. 2B, 2B. Oh, this also says new cities expansion pieces and looks identical. So there's two copies of the new cities expansion pieces for whatever reason. Must be enough pieces that it takes both boxes. I don't know. Zolkin I love. And I, it's not just because I always win. I so thought the last time we played I was doomed. There was no way. I don't know how I managed to pull that off. Tail to Walken was close. I cannot believe how close I was in Tail to Walken. That last game. Alright, done. Another new cities expansion piece box. All right, this looks kind of messy. You know what? I'm gonna, oh, sorry, bump the mic and make lots of noise. Move some of these out of the way so it just doesn't look so cluttered. I'm gonna get these all out of the way just off camera here so you can focus on what I'm actually doing. I'm gonna get the bag of toothpicks out of the way. And next, we're on to page three. Page three, tray is 5A, 5B, and 5C are all identical, and they're gonna be on sheets 2A and 2B. Uh, these are all symbol faced up. These look like card holders. These really look like card holders. Okay. Again, very, very easy to punch. Very impressed by that. Like, oh wow. I've had board games that are way more difficult to punch than these. And sheet two B done. <laughs> now I'm mixing up the pieces between both of them. Oh no. We have end, end, end. Oh, that's an edge. I'm missing an end. End. Ta da. Okay, we're gonna build this one first. Symbol out. So again, as we've repeated many times, every time we're gonna start with the dry run. So there are two kind of funky pieces here. All right, simple enough. Yeah, this is definitely a card holder. Definitely a card holder. So yo, this is what we're building next. The nice gentis tree there. Card holder. What's nice, it doesn't look like there's a wrong way to assemble these. Like I couldn't accidentally put one of the bumps at one end and not at the other. They're definitely made so they only fit one way. It's a nice touch. But, or interchangeable. Like this piece and this piece are completely interchangeable. They're either interchangeable or only fit one way. There doesn't seem to be any way to assemble these wrong. That is nice. Dig it. Again, very impressed by folded space. I kind of wish I had some like light C clamps, but I wouldn't want anything hard because it would actually damage it. There you go. Card tray. These are for civilization cards. I'm gonna go here, here, this over here, and these here and here. Ta -da. Now we're gonna glue it. I could always play on extreme mode and try and do them without dry runs. I have a feeling though that's going to be a bit messy. That's one advantage of not using glue on wooden inserts. But you can always take them apart if you make a mistake. 
Now white glue doesn't dry that quick, so if I did make a mistake, I'd probably have enough time to react to do something to fix it. Oh, see, I did make a mistake in my glue. There you go. See, I'm talking while doing this. I put glue there. That's bad. There's nothing that goes there. more of those to build. Oh, I made a mistake. See, we're not paying attention. I made a mistake. for future expansions like maybe all these boxes that just say TMG or whatever are just going to go in the thing to take up room so there you go you can't make a box insert without making a quick mistake at least one it's a quick fix caught it early gotta make sure I know if I'm on the A or the B sheet even though they said they were identical the cuts are identical but the graphics are different all right, fixed. Now we have it logo down. Now these are logo up. These are gonna be the same. They all hold civilization cards because the civilization cards are coming, come in era one, two, and three. They didn't no, lab, uh, label them one, two, and three, but I read the rules and I know they're gonna come one, two, and three. So instead of getting things mixed up, let's do one at a time. Built, done. Let's do it again. is done we have card holders so in the game there are civilization cards that come out in over three ages so now we have a spot to put age one two and three this one i honestly think is going to go into the box like this and has nothing in it i think anything that has the gentis logo uh which will be good if they ever put out expansions right you can put it you can flip it over So this time, 6, A, B, C, and D are all identical. All of the go with the symbols face up. So it shouldn't be too bad. It is the entirety of sheet 3A and 3B. So we're gonna grab 3A should be on top here. Yes, it is. Oh, these are boxes for the players. So the players get all their player pieces in one place. What's kind of nice, the way they did it, like the pieces are coming out how you assemble them. Like this goes up, that goes up, and this goes up, and all that's missing is the bottom piece, or the top piece, which is over here. This one may need some elastic to hold it together, because this is a little rougher else we have built so far tonight because that bottom piece is bowed slightly so anyway here's what we are going to have a nice little 
blocks. It's probably going to be for each player. So that's where your buildings go, your cubes, and your citizens. Citizen people. This one, because of the warping, I am going to um, elastic the crap out of. Yeah, this one's rough. Uh, the pressure of the elastics is causing it kind of bow in in parts. Okay, I think this one I'm going to leave the elastics on for a bit and then take them off, but here we go. So far, this was the roughest build, but it's just due to a, just a slight warping on this back piece, which just happens to be this particular board. Uh, That's how I got it, right? It's got a little bit of bend to it. We are building the same thing again. Like I said, these are player boxes. So as far as I know, I'm doing four of these in a row. Another player box. We're getting down to the finish here. There's not much left. We have two more player boxes to build, and we have two more sheets after that. So this sheet is going to have two more player boxes on it. None of this is sponsored, by the way. This is not a um, promo item. This is not a review copy. This is a game I bought and paid for on Kickstarter. This is not sponsored content. All views are my own and not paid for by anyone. Though if you do want to pay for my views, you can check out our Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash tabletop bellhop. But my views will all still be my own no matter who gives us money. One more of these to build. Shiny, isn't it? Well, I don't know. Shiny is not the right word. It's nice. They like said the, the the lightness, it's solid. Like there, there's, that's nice thick card. It's not squishy. Okay. This piece does not want to dry. Okay. We're going to spend a bit more time holding this. All right. Now done. One more player box. Then we're down to the final two sheets. Okay, dry run done. Time for loot. As the bell hop states the best games in your collection are the ones that hit the table and if a box insert is something that will let you get the game to the table more often it is worth it So 
there we go. Last player box. Done. Built. Ready to go. Moving on. Tray 7A and B. The trays are identical. Symbols are going up. We are using sheet 4A and B. Those are the last two. We are almost done. Top half here. Fits great. This is going to hold the time and lock tokens. So that's what it's going to look like when it's done. much all dry. A box for time tokens and locks. Everything's fit really nice too. I've had a couple of the wooden ones that I had to sand the pieces before uh, before they would fit. More hourglasses, more locks. Windsor's not bad. Like, I, we don't have a game con or anything. There's not a lot. Like, it's, it's more of a, you know, if you're ever stopping in, give me a shout and I'll tell you where to eat. <laughs> There's not, not a really a lot here. Unless you're into casinos. We've got a supposedly nice casino. Not my thing. We do have a good gaming scene, though. All right, what are we building next? We are on to the final page. The final two trays. The trays are identical. We are doing tray 8A and 8B. Uh, they are identical symbol face up. Second, last, insert done. officially done okay so let's see how this is supposed to go layer one layer two layer three you have completed your gentis organizer yeah the problem is these aren't labeled now how am i supposed to know which is which so yeah anything with a tree on it you're not actually using 
So it's going to go, where am I going to do this? We're going to go here. So here, here, here. And then this one has nothing in it, which is odd. So you're literally going to do this. You know what this makes me think of? The auto industry. In the auto industry, if you ship a pallet of containers, and there's upside down containers, means there's not parts, and they do it to fill out the container. I'm, I'm getting work flashbacks here from my, uh, my previous day job. So we got those. Then we have 8A and 8B, which is these things that I just built. So there we go. That's going to be the Gentis box insert in the box. Gotta say, one of the things I definitely prefer in the wooden ones is usually you can just take the whole thing in and out. And that's not gonna be the case here. This is gonna be a matter of pinching and grabbing, right? So what I will do is I will put this in the lid so you can actually see, or I'll dump the lid and put it in the bottom of the box. So, so I haven't punched this yet, obviously. layer one that's not bad fits pretty good now we're going on to layer two all right layer two layer two we're gonna hold it this way then layer three is this it's a little looser than I expected. It's not a tight fit. Most of the wooden inserts are very tight fits. So actually this is right side up. So there you go. That is what it's gonna look like once it's in there. I would assume we'll grab the board. We go on top. Then we're gonna have the player boards on top of that. And it looks like we're gonna have a nice tight fit. There you go. Nice tight fit, no gap. I like that. Not a fan when, when you build an insert, there's a little gap at the bottom. So there you have the Gentis box insert build. So final look, the Gentis box insert from Folded Space, which came with the Kickstarter deluxified edition of Gentis. You get to see my face again. I am Mo Tuzano, the tabletop bellhop your cardboard concierge. This has been a tabletop bellhop room upgrade. Today, we took the game Gentis, the deluxified edition from Tasty Minstrel Games, and we built the folded space box insert for that game. This is the end result. I have not put the components in here yet because the glue's still drying. And actually, I should probably take it out so it doesn't glue to the bottom of the cardboard box or something. But I'll do that after the video is done. So this has been a tabletop bellhop presentation. I am Motuzano, the tabletop bellhop, your cardboard concierge. You can join me here on Twitch every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, where we record episodes of the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, where myself and my co-host Sean answer your gaming game night questions. If you've got a question for the Bellhop, think of us as a Dear Abby for gamers. You can send that question to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. You can also head over to tabletopbellhop.com, which is our website, where you can find news, reviews, uh, looks at the games we played recently, as well as a bunch of tools that I think are useful for many tabletop gamers. Like we've got a list of tabletop top Patreons, we've got a list of tabletop podcasts, we've got a label list of tabletop crafters, and so on. You can find those just under our title on the webpage. If you dig the content you're seeing here, it'd be awesome if you hit that subscribe or follow button. As well, you could head over to patreon.com forward slash tabletop bellhop, where it would be awesome if you would consider tipping the bellhop. For tabletop bellhop, I am Mo Tuzano, the tabletop bellhop, your cardboard concierge. Good night and game on. Come on.